Before I recorded this video, I was supposed to look up what Larnacy is and I forgot. So if there's anyone in the comments down below to let me know what that is, it would be a good little help for the start of this. So if you haven't guessed by now, by the thumbnail, the title and the intro, I'm going to be going over the Grand Larnacy deck from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. If you haven't seen the previous one, I've done the most wanted one and that will be in my YouTube. So go link, go subscribe and all of that good stuff. In this video, I'll be talking about the commander, sub commander and the best parts of the decks, mainly being the rares and mythics in the deck and giving an overall thoughts and opinions over it like I did in the previous one. But before I start that, a word from our sponsors. The sponsor of this video is me. I have started an Etsy page where I'm going to try and be selling clothes that I've designed, thought would be funny, thought would be cool, thought would be amazing on people's bodies. So I literally spent maybe a month or two looking at different resources and stuff to come up with the nicest clothes I could possibly find with the coolest designs that I have done myself with stuff like play mats, hoodies, t-shirts. I'm going to try and do phone cases. They're harder than I thought, but I do think that it is is a really good thing to actually put into. So if you would like to help me out or help the channel out, please go onto my Etsy, it will be linked down below and you'll be able to find very nice clothing and also be supporting the channel. So links down below. And also if there's any other designs, I will be putting on any of my social media. So please follow me there as well. So when it comes to this, the commander of the deck is a character we've also seen in other stories before, the same as Olivia. Also, in a really cool old full art, which I'm really liking. And I said this in the previous video, I do think that the commander and sub commander should be in an alt art theme. Just in case someone buys the deck, mainly wants to play the exact same it is, but use the sub commander as well. But now let's go over who the commander is. And the commander is Gonti Grand Inquisitor. For two black, green, and a blue, you get a legendary creature, Aetherborn Rogue, that is a mythic. Spells you cast, but don't own cost one less to cast. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, look at the top card of that player's library, then exile it face down. You may play that card as long as it remains exiled, and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell, and it is a 5-5. Five five. When it comes to picking a commander, five mana of a 5-5 five five with no keywords is a bit uh, on my end. I would only ever do it if it is a very powerful commander, which this commander is, but it's also based on luck as well. You kind of, there's like a sub game around it that makes this commander even harder because if you constantly pick at the same person, you're more saying that they are the threat, which then makes it that it's kind of not a 1v1, but it gives the other two players time to kind of then become the threat. It's kind of a focus down on one person who probably has the most better cards in their deck. So again, if you're playing with your playgroup and you know someone who has the deck that they throw all their money in, that has the amazing all arts and the uh, amazing cards that are like 20, 50, 100 quid, th that's gonna be a hard focus. I do like the ability that you're allowed to play mana as pretty much any color when it comes to casting them face down cards. That is really good because if someone's playing a deck that you don't have the colors for, it's gonna be very hard to get them colors unless you use something like treasures. When it comes to this, the first thing that popped in my head that I would like to do is that there is that mutate card that has the same ability that you're allowed to exile stuff from people's library and use those cards. So putting that on this is absolutely hilarious to me because technically it would trigger twice. Technically, in a weird way. So I do think this is a quite good commander. It's just not my play style, but I can see other people enjoying it. I do have friends that this is their play style and I do see them probably wanting to play this deck. But with every commander, there is also a sub commander. And the sub commander of this deck is Felix Five Boots. For two black, green and a blue, you get a legendary creature, Ooze Rogue, that is a mythic. As Menace and Ward 2, if a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time and is a 5-4. Again, in this set, the sub commander is always better than the commander. This is two decks in a row that I have preferred the sub commander. There are so many creatures that have attack triggers or ETBs that are absolutely amazing. There is so many things you could possibly do and do really weird stuff. I really do like this commander overall. I actually again prefer it over the commander. If there was any triggered abilities you would like to see, 
let me know in the comments down below. But now that we've gone over the commander and sub commander, let's go over the deck itself, starting off with the creatures. In this deck, there is 37 creatures, which makes sense since both do rather like combat damage abilities. But you get creatures just like Baleful Strix, Ghostly Pillifer, Thieving Skydiver, Thieving Vermit, Tower Winder, Cold Eyed Silky, Edric Spy Master of Tress, Nashi Moon Sage Skyon, Shadow Mage Infiltrator, Thief of Sanity, Ukima Stalking Shadow, Kaiser Ruthless Stalker, Hostage Taker, Savvy Trader, Blade Gift Prototype, Dazzling Sphinx, Fallen Shinobi, Oran Frostfang, Smearling Spelljacker, The Mimeo Plasm, Oblivion Sower, Orochi Soul Ravenger, Brainstealer Dragon, Dulvani Pro Midal, Sage of the Beyond, Silent Blade Oni, Thieving Algamam. So again, a lot of creatures with a lot of cool abilities. However, I was kind of shocked to see some of them. I'm shocked to see Eldrazi, but again, I think it's because of this whole new story about all portals pretty much going everywhere, that people are out going to different universes. That is making it kind of more sense to have old characters in decks, have new versions of older cards too, in the same theme, like this, again, this one being the cowboy theme. I do like it and I do like what they're doing. However, there's a lot of the story I disagree with, but, but that is a separate video. I do like the creatures of this deck. There is some that I'm like questioning why they should be in here, but a lot of the creatures I understand why. But then when there's creatures I am thinking of, I'm like, oh no, that's probably too expensive, even though they're not allowed to do the second hand market pricing. But that again is a separate video. Now we're going on to the spells of the deck. There are 16 in total and you get cool spells just like Course of the Swine, Extract Brain, Predator's Hour, Sinope Insight, Villainous Wealth, Arcane Heist, Baneful Mastery, Cunning Ritual, Plasma Capture, Stolen Goods, Heartless Conscription. So when it comes to this, I wrote all the scripts at once and I do find it weird that the Swine card is in two decks and I'm like, it is not a powerful card. I always see people that buy these decks or have that card always take it out. I know so many people that have that card and they just don't find it to be good or powerful at all. But there is overall, if we're minusing that, a good handful of cards that are okay to good and then some that are quite good. Again, one or two, not the biggest fans of. Now let's go on to the artifacts of the deck. When it comes to this, there are seven in total, but five of them are mana rocks, but I'll be going over two and them two are Dream Thieves Bandana and Chaos Wand. Again, Chaos Wand is a weird card to see in this deck. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I've had it in decks before and I've always ended up taking it out, but that new card is absolutely amazing and actually will probably be played in a lot of decks. I do like that card very much. Now let's go on to the enchantments. When it comes to enchantments, there's only two in total, so I'll be mentioning both, and they are Cunning Ratonic, Mind Stylation. The first card I find is very underrated. I find that to be a very powerful and really good card. It has actually saved me more times than I care to admit. And then Mind Stylation is such a good card. But to be honest, I say if you ever want to get this deck and want to keep that card in, get that secret layer one. It is just mint. But now lands, when it comes to lands, there's 38 lands in general, but you get lands such like Drowned Catacomb, Flooded Grove, Hinterland Harbour, Sunken Hollow, Twilight Mire, Woodland Cemetery. When it comes to this, the first deck had quite a good amount of lands. Now, not so much. I'm not the biggest fan of the land selection in this, same with the enchantments. I do think that both of them could have been a lot better. So again, overall, it's not the best when it comes to lands. Now, my overall thoughts and opinions of this deck is that it is quite good. The commander and sub commander are really good. I'm more focused on the sub commander. You get a fair few creatures, not as good as the Olivia one, but again, you get better uh, instants and sorceries. And overall, I do think it is slightly worse. So I'm gonna give it probably a 7.3. But I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comments down below. Let me know what you would give it while you're down there. Remember to like, subscribe and follow and all that YouTube stuff that they always ask for. But as always, if you like this video, I have the Olivia deck here, a playlist with is it worth it magic stuff 
here and a subscribe button here. And again, I want to thank everyone for their support so far and I will see you all in the next video.